Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to go through a game from 1978 against a player, Michael Basman. You may have heard of him. He's played unusual systems. He plays the Grob. He plays the St. George defence. He also plays the Grob with black, which is 1G5. So, we're in, some, we're in for some unusual games. I'll probably go through a few of them in a couple of videos. And I think... Especially today, this will be interesting because everyone knows too much theory these days. And you just fires up Houdini. And it gets a bit samey. You want to play something different against your opponent. So why not play the Grob? As in this game, where Mike Basman played international grandmaster John Nunn. This game was from 1978. So quite a long time ago. Way before computers were developed. So, Mike Basman kicked off with 1G4. And straight away, I will say I've got the computer on just to check a couple of things. So, straight away, G4, you might straight away the computer says black is 0.47 better already. And this may put a few players off, but if you're actually at the chessboard, how would you actually refute this move, G4? It's not very easy, and we'll see how Grandmaster fares against it. So G4 was played, and now D5. Basman played H3. Another variation is also Bishop G2, and if uh, Bishop takes G4, White can play C4, attacking this pawn twice. And also we have his pin. Attacking this pawn. So after c6 and queen b3, black could be in a bit of a mess if he makes a mistake. And I'm sure your opponents would not like to play against this without knowing any theory. After e5, John Nunn played e5. And now Basman played d3. Possibly an unusual move because the usual idea is to play bishop g2 followed by d4 or c4 and putting pressure on the centre. Playing d3 has its merits though because he's obviously preparing c4 and a bishop g2 later. Bishop d6 just playing normally from black. And now Basman struck with c4. Attacking the centre. And opening the diagonal. If black takes this, we get into a more open game. And after like knight c6, knight c3, bishop b6. I think Basman would have opted for something like bishop g2 because then... It takes, we can start complicating the game a bit and attacking pawns and weaknesses. And we probably would have got a game like this, like queen, to, queen takes c6, and now bishop d7, just drop it back to queen g2. And already we've got a very unusual position. Black may be slightly better, but I'm sure white doesn't mind this. We have a lot of counterplay from the g-pawn being pushed so far. And also... If we get a rook onto the, onto the d-file, those two bishops aren't exactly safe. In the actual game, Nunn played c6, just supporting the centre and creating a solid defence. Knight c3 puts more pressure on the d5 pawn, and now knight to e7 to relieve the pressure. White developed normally with knight to f3, and now Nunn played quite an unusual move. Well, maybe not unusual. Maybe some of your opponents will play it if you played the grub. He played h5, trying to undermine the g pawn. Now, you may be thinking, well, push it. Just a bit like the Polish, you can push the pawn. But we always get maybe in a bit of trouble, especially if uh, black just develops normally with castles. And black can actually play around this pawn by playing his bishop to like f5 and things. So. It's not like great. Instead, Basman decided to take it. And the reason for this is after Rook takes... The Rook on h5 is a bit of a weak piece. It's not. It's undefended, and that's a major piece in the, cen in, the, in the central rank of the board already. And it can come under fire. Black also has given up castling rights. So that's very important. Basman says himself in his book, the Rook is now slightly exposed. So, we'll see how White gangs up on this rook in a later date. Bishop d2 was played by White. 
developing. And now a6. I'm not really sure what this move actually tries to do. a6 possibly supports b5. Maybe he's scared that the c pawn will get will take the d pawn and the b5 square will be weakened. Especially after bishop d2 because there's no queen a5 checks anymore. But because of a6 now, now black is susceptible to an attack. A great move from Basman who played e4. Now also notice once e4 is moved, the queen is liberated to attack this rook on h5. Maybe thinking, why not just d4 in this position? Block everything up. Surely that's a good move. Well, you'd think so, but after knight takes d4, the queen is now attacking the rook. And after e takes, queen takes the rook, d takes c3, bishop takes c3. I would prefer white here, and I'm sure a majority of players would. Black has two pieces for the rook, but white has two extra pawns and two bishops still. And we've also attacking the g-pawn, threatening to win another pawn. So black would have to play on normally, but then castles, knight g6, bishop takes g7. We have now three extra pawns, and these will tell, especially when we start pushing them up. So none played d takes c4, and Basman recaptured on c4, and now knight to d7. Trying to develop fast. White does have the initiative here, especially after knight g5, attacking the rook once again. So knight f6 to defend the rook and now another good move queen to f3 with the plan of castling and x-raying the queen the queen comes into the attack of the center of the board but also the rook will come into the attack attacking both the bishop and the queen knight g6 possibly trying for a queen e7 castles getting over the plan and now queen to e7 to avoid the pin basman plays a safety move which I think actually many players would find it hard to find. I think I would find this hard. Hard. Obviously, we'd look at this position for a bit. We can see how does White want to continue in this position. We can also continue Rook to G1, possibly continuing the attack. But Basman may may have sensed some dan danger and played King to B1. I think he's just diverting away from the fact that there's any checks could come in especially the queen which attacks the g5 knight knight to f4 a simple move can you see the threat the rook threatens to take the knight on g5 so rook to g1 is played but also this rook has another idea he attacks the pawn on g7 so this is why black played king to f8 to defend And now, that knight f4 is kind of annoying. We also want to get another piece into the attack, so white plays knight to e2. Just getting rid of that knight. And now knight to e6. The knight is very pesky. So white takes it off. The reason being is because I think that knight is quite powerful. It's threatening to take our best piece, and also it's threatening to come into all these nice squares. That knight is black's best piece, so that's why he takes it off. And now bishop can take it off as well, bringing that into the game. It's quite an even game so far, but white still has some initiative. He plays knight to g3, attacking the rook again. This is the point of the whole game. The rook on h5 is, is really weak. It's just on a terrible square. And White is gaining all his play by attacking it. He's gaining moves and time from this misplaced piece. Rook to h8 from none. And now there are a couple of moves that I was looking at. One was knight f5. Which it looks okay, but I don't see how White can continue after bishop takes, queen takes, and then say bishop c5. Mainly because all of White's pawns are on white squares and this bishop on f1 really can't get to a good square in time can't get to a good square bef because before the rook gets to d8 say also after g6 i think black is quite equal but for this reason after rook h8 white didn't play knight f5 to keep to sort the piece off he played a good move bishop g5 Swapping the knight off may have 
By swapping the knight, it's black may have felt he was equalizing, but this bishop's g5 proves that white is still slightly better. He has threats of knight h5, and that pin is unbreakable, practically unbreakable, because there's no h6 anymore to stop the bishop. So black is suffering in this position. None developed, he played rook d8, trying to get more pieces into the game. And now Basman played bishop to e2, just supporting the idea of knight h5. However, knight h5 could have been played straight away. Because rook h5 would have happened, and now bishop takes, queen takes f6, and now queen takes h5. Why is the exchange up? And black's best move here was g6. And we get into quite a nice position. But after queen b6 and the rook d7, bishop d3, white tries to get claim the advantage. It's going to be a hard slog, but I think white is still slightly better. Especially if c5 comes at a later date. But Basman was patient, he played bishop to e2. And now rook takes h3 was played. Eating a pawn and pinning the knight on g3. But queen g2, and now everything unravels. Because the bishop is unleashed and these two heavy pieces are going to attack this g7 pawn. Black is in a bit of trouble here. And I don't think he senses the dan danger enough. He should have tried to be more active. Sh I think bishop c5 here was the best move. Because... It gets complicated, but the computer seems to think it's a draw. He gives the computer gives a nice line. Knight h5, and now rook takes d1. Rook takes d1. Bishop d4. Bishop takes f6. G takes. Queen g7. King e8. Queen g8. Check. Remember, this is all forced. F king d7. Queen b8. B5. F4. Trying to undermine the d4 bishop. Queen b4, threatening mate. And now we have knight f6 check. And after king e7, rook can take on d4. E takes. And now we have a simple draw. Because perpetual check would occur. So that's a very long drawish line. But probably possibly the best move for black. Bishop c5. Instead, I think Nunn was a bit passive. He played bishop to c7. I think his idea was that if the rook takes on d8, the bishop can take on d8 and then move the queen. Because then, then the knight is no longer pinned. But now Basman crashed in with the original plan, knight to h5. Just that knight on f6 is now incredibly weak. So rook takes d1 happened. Rook takes d1. And now rook takes h5. He's pretty much now forced. The queen can't really move, let's say, to b4 because the bishop can just take it. After g, g takes, we have like queen g7. King g8, knight takes f6. So, rook takes h5 was forced, and now the bishop takes it. And still that pin is still there. In the game, Nunn made a bit more of an inac inaccuracy. He played queen to b4. The best move according to... Houdini was actually bishop to b6. I think he wants to get onto d, the d4 square and at least close his rook off. But we can also play bishop to g4. And if bishop to d4, we just take... Just take everything off and play this end game. White should still be better. So none decided to go for counterplay equal queen to b4. And this is where Basman had the chance to finish none off. He could have just taken the knight on f6. After g takes, we can just play bishop g4 trying to swap things. And if the pawn takes, the clever idea is queen to h3. Threatening queen to h8. And infiltrating with the queen. For instance, if bishop to e6 here, we just take on e6. And then after king e7 check, king e8. We just take the bishop, game over. I start the queen h3, king to g7, trying to defend again. We just play bishop to f5, and that king is ridiculously vulnerable, and it will be game over. 
Basman was a bit more conservative. Fair play to him. He played bishop to e2, just protecting the pawn and defending the bishop from attack. None took on c4, takes on c4, takes on c4. And now Basman just simplified. Took on g6, take on g6, and now queen to g4. Threatening queen to c8 check, winning the bishop. Queen to e6, queen takes, f takes, and now rook d7. Simple play from Basman, and none resigned in this position. Fair play to both players. I would have resigned as black here as well. Simple game from Basman. He defeated, a, at the time he was an international master, but now a grandmaster, he defeated John Nunn with 1g4. So if Basman can do it, why can't other players do it at club level? Maybe this is a question we should be asking ourselves, especially with increased theory and move memorization coming into play in most of our chess games today. I'll try and find some more good games from Mike Basman, I think, because his games are actually interesting and complex. I really do like them. Thank you very much for watching.